Theodosia and the Serpents of Chaos, written by R.L. Lefevers, and this is chapter three. Work to do. Theodosia Elizabeth Throckmorton. Hmm? What? I sat up and rubbed the sleep from my eyes. Father was standing in the doorway, a ferocious scowl on his face. Not the sarcophagus again, he said. Oops, I usually try to be up and about before he is for this very reason. But when he spends the entire night in scholarly pursuit and never goes to bed, well, it's rather impossible. Really, Father, I'm not hurting it a bit, and it is the best way to keep out the drafts. It was also the safest place for avoiding all the curses that swirled about the museum at night, but I could just imagine what he'd say if I told him that. Yes, but it's a priceless artifact that is sitting alone in a closet because there's no room for it in the exhibits. Truly, Father, I'm very careful. Besides, where else would you like me to sleep when I'm forced to stay here all night? He had the good grace to wince slightly at this. In an armchair, maybe, or curled up on the rug in front of the fireplace in the staff sitting room, anywhere but in a blasted sarcophagus. Yes, but there was no protection in those places. I simply didn't trust the power of amulets alone at nights against all the black magic and troublesome spirits. Of course, I couldn't tell him that either. But Father, I'm sure that Men Menonot wouldn't mind. Who on earth the young priestess this sarcophagus belonged to, I explain. She was from the temple of Taurat, an Egyptian goddess and protector of children. Just think how much easier I am to protect in here. He sighed in exasperation and then closed the door. I could have pressed my point a bit more, but I didn't want to risk reminding him that I really should be sleeping at school, where all the other girls my age were. I did my best to avoid that topic at all costs. I crawled over the high stone side of the sarcophagus, which took up half of my room. Well, it was more of a closet, really, but no one else ever used it, so I had it all to myself. There was just enough space for a small writing desk and an even smaller battered old washstand that Limp, the, wa the watchman, had found for me. He'd also pounded a few nails into the wall, so I had a place to hang my frocks and pinafores. As I splashed cold water on my face, I realized I had slept through my best chance for sneaking into Father's workroom unnoticed. I really needed to get my hands on that statuette. And soon, I looked at my watch. Mother was due back in five hours and 57 minutes, and she was bound to have loads of new artifacts with her. It was very likely we'd have scads of new unknown magic swirling through the museum before long. I pulled my gloves firmly into place and then stepped out to face the day. My next opportunity came when father left his workroom in search of a cup of tea. I usually brought it to him around this time every morning, but I hadn't that day, hoping he would eventually give up and go in search of one himself. It worked. I peeked inside the workroom. Other than artifacts from every civilization known to man spread out on the, works, uh, on the work tables in various states of disrepair, it appeared empty. I was halfway to the, great, to the crate when an obnoxious voice behind me stopped me in my tracks. Where is it? I turned. Clive Fagenbush stood just to the side of the door almost as if he'd been waiting for me. Where is what? I asked. The statue. His eyes shifted from my face to the roll of papyrus I held in my hand. He strode forward and snatched the papyrus from me. Just as I opened my mouth to protest, a familiar voice called out, I say, Fagenbush, what's all this about? Give Theo back her papyrus. Scowling, Nigel Bollingsworth, stepped into the room. Have I mentioned how much I adore Nigel Bollingsworth? In fact, I think I shall marry him when I grow up, although I haven't told him yet. 
Father said I mustn't. In fact, when I told Father, what he said was, What makes you so sure anyone's going to want to marry you, Miss Busybody? I thought she had something that didn't belong to her, Fagenbush muttered. Well, you can see that she doesn't. Now go and make the lower exhibits ready for the visit from the Hedgewick School for Wayward Boys, scheduled for this morning. I want everything securely fastened down. You remember the last time they were here. Fagenbush curled his lip in disgust and shoved the roll of papyrus back into my hands, then turned on his heel and left. Are you all right, Theo? Nigel asked. Yes, Miss, Mr. Bollingsworth. I looked up at him and let my eyes fill with gratitude. Thank you ever so much. I rubbed my wrist so he would know just how horrible Fagenbush had been. In truth, it did ache a little. He beamed at me. Very good then, carry on. And with that too, he left the room. With no time to waste, I snatched the statue from the crate, hid it in the papyrus roll and headed down to the reading room on the first floor. I kept a cautious eye out for Fagenbush the whole way, but he appeared to have scuttled back under his rock.